Hello, 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 and welcome to Rainbows Rising, where we ascend together. I'm your host, Rainbow Raja, and I would like to welcome Althea. Um, I don't know if she has a last name to that, but I know <laughs> her as <good> Althea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It is such a privilege to have you on. I have been following you uh, personally, not, not as a professional, but personally for quite some time. And your light co-transmissions are so powerful and they just... They're ooey gooey yumness. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. <laughs> so thank you so much for, uh, for, I guess, taking my invite to come on to the show and to share your gift and to give the listeners like tips on how they can connect with their guides. Cause really that's, that's my goal here on rainbows rising is to help people access their gifts, their guides and their inner wisdom with more ease. And I know there's all these programs out there and they're, you know, it's, it can get really difficult finding information. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing, sharing what you know. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's like, it's, it's, there's a lot of information out there and it can be a little bit overwhelming for people. So it's nice to, to hear it, you know, me and you, we both channelers, we both already connecting. Um, so it's it's nice to be able to guide people um, into that. And I think there's a lot of confusion out there as well. I was just saying earlier, um, no one really teaches us these things. It's really a bit of trial and error. So, you know, when you see someone who's, oh, okay, they, they're doing a little bit. Okay, okay. So let me like figure out how they're doing it and see and understand. And really it's, it, that's all, all it is about. It's about sharing the tools and sharing the knowledge so that everyone can have it and everyone can be able to, you know, heal themselves, heal others, connect to their guides, connect to their higher self and be in that high alignment. Um, you know, I always say that, um, a good, you know, spiritual teacher or mentor or call it whatever knows that they're learning as much from you as you are learning from them. So for me, every time I speak, every time I channel, every time I give out information, um, I learn just as much myself through it, if it makes sense. Absolutely. A lot of my episodes are actually very much I go in with with an intention of, of what I want to bring to the audience. And my guides will just go on a little tangent or, or they'll nudge me like, hey, talk about this. So um, I learned so much just being in alignment and being in the flow. Um, so I I really resonate with that. I totally resonate with that. So um, I know how I start my journey, right? It's it's more like you stumble into it than anything. But how did how did you start your journey and and how did you develop the the tool set to to do the work you do because what you do is um a lot m like a lot more intensive than somebody say channeling somebody's dead grandmother or um somebody channeling a guide's information like oh yeah. you another free more tail <laughs> Yeah. So it's always like I've always had psychic intuition and prophetic dreaming. Even as a child, I would see shadows and things and, you know, everything was quite open. It then kind of like closed up and blocked a little bit in my teens mm -hmm. um, and in my early 20s. And then I'd... <sighs> I've had different, very intense experiences. Um, I had a near-death experience um, five, six years ago, which really, really helped me change lifestyle and brought me closer to a more spiritual life, let's put it that way. Um, I started um, getting energy work and Reiki done about eight or nine years ago. So my journey with Reiki has also been quite a long one. Um, and then in 2018, I was basically abducted. So I wasn't really abducted. I had like lower vibrational frequency and negative entities come into my room and I physically confronted them. So do you know what I mean? You don't really do. go back to that. That's just like, okay, thank you. For they, all they, those they, listeners they, out there who may not understand, for, for someone who is energy sensitive, you just get a feeling there's something there. You might see it, you might hear it, you might smell it. Um, yeah. Everybody has their own 
their own sensory no no this was very 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 third dimensional density yeah. these these they were here they physically oh i God. was physically yeah yeah i was physically touched and yeah it was it was quite intense um so that was then what spiraled me more into an understanding but it was quite crazy because i had been doing um research on you know just like other life forms and stuff like that. Since I was maybe 12, I felt like there was something there that I had to know. And then after this experience, my perception completely shifted. Mm -hmm. um, and that allowed me to open and that allowed me to start downloading information. And that's when I started connecting all the dots. I think about a year after that, um, I had two very intense clearings from um, quite a few different light language channelers worked on me all at the same time um, mm -hmm. and allowed me to release and activate. And then, yeah, and then I slowly started activating the light language. It started with the hands before with the gestures um, and then after like a month or two my throat started opening as well um, and yeah and then with just practice love and trusting myself trusting my channel and also like this is what I always say and and like to to explain to the people I work with as well it's um, so being in in alignment being in flow as uh, somewhere between surrendering to the will of the universe and having discipline like if you want to be a channeler and you want to do it properly, like it's, there's no like half ways. You need to be disciplined. You need to, there's, there's things that you need, you need to be mindful and aware. You need to protect your field. You need to be physically strong, especially when you're withstanding a channel. Um, like I do, like people who've seen my work know, like I move, I, I you know, there's a lot of stuff passes through me. Um, so it's very important for me to be also physically fit. And I don't think people emphasize this enough. Um, mm when 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 they channeling like as you said it's different if you're just a medium and you're tapping in and you're channeling someone's dead grandfather or you know someone who's passed on like I'm able to do that as well I, it's not really what I do it's 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 um it's a different frequency so I can't do it if I want to like it, it does occasionally happen um that people come through in sessions and whatnot but it's not I work on another frequency because with the light language it's a little bit um it's a little bit different it's a different um, modality it, it really is yeah it's just a different frequency I mean when you're channeling people who've passed over it's usually fourth dimensional density um stuff that you're channeling when you're with the light language it's five six and up um so it's it's just it's just tuning into something um different and and it's 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 more um, you know, you can give out, I feel like I can give more to the collective in this way, you know, rather than channeling someone for an individual, um, you know, yeah. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I have dabbled in a lot of different fields myself. I've, I've done the, the talking to, to somebody's, you know, passed on person, but the trouble with that is then nobody can really move on. I, I I noticed after several sessions working with somebody's loved one, it's like you act as a bridge for them not to be able to mm -hmm. let go and you're not able to let these people heal. So I, I stopped doing that work and I started working with guides in okay. clearing mm -hmm. and opening hearts and working with crystals and stuff. So yeah. Um and that's that's a really interesting point about the the fourth dimensional energy. Uh and for those of you out there that maybe haven't been doing this yet, um energy it has like different feelings almost like food has different tastes so like when you're working with like fourth dimensional energy or a specific being they have different feelings and flavors uh i'm doing quotes air quotes uh flavors <laughs> that you can feel into and be able to like call back that energy time and time again to work with those guides you'll also be able to know when they come because uh, you'll just be like, oh, hey, I know you. Um, mm. So uh, you were talking about having your body be um, a clear vessel, being strong enough. Now, that's mm. actually a really interesting point. I haven't heard any other light language people really bring up. We hear about, you know, they'll talk about having vegan diets or being breatharians or having, you know, these these really <laughs> controversial. Yeah, right. Really controversial uh, living uh, like lifestyle changes, but for people who live in like, you know, just live normal lives, uh, and mm -hmm. are looking for an easy transition into taking care of their vessel to hold their light body at a higher vibration. What are mm -hmm. some easy 
like beginner steps to having mm -hmm. a cleaner vessel, a, a temple body um, to hold these frequencies mm -hmm. and to allow them to move through with more ease. I would say, okay, so I would say everything is a tool, the same with food. Um, so I'm going to give the meat example because it's a good way and you can see it in both ways. So I haven't had meat or fish in over 10 years. I don't like the taste. I actually don't like it. So that's why I stopped. It's not, I'm not depriving myself of anything. Um, I, but, and, and. The meat is can be quite heavy, so it can take up a lot of energy to digest it. And if it's not been, you know, if it's like been slaughtered and all the pain and, and all the energy the animal goes through, you need to transmute that. So that's going to slow your process down into clearing your system, um, if it makes sense. So, but I know channelers who I have who are really amazing light language channelers um, who are not necessarily doing the work online, but they, they're doing the work who still eat meat. And the reason being, it's because once you reach a certain frequency, whatever you put in your body you're going to be able to transmute it so it's good to eliminate certain things when you're in the process of getting to a certain frequency but once you're there then and you're able to maintain it and you know how to maintain it then you can if you want to mm. eat meat you know what i mean but i would if you want to get to a certain frequency i would eliminate the meat obviously alcohol smoking yep. um all the things really that pollute your system and your body and physical exercise is is really good as well because you move you physically moving stuff through i do so for me, it works nicely, but, be, but again, this is me. I have to withstand quite a lot. I do um, both cardio weights and yoga. Every time I train, I do both because I find that the cardio and the weights really ground me. And then the yoga really helps me with maintaining the alignment. Mm. I'll occasionally do a little bit of Qigong and Tai Chi and like movement meditation as well. Um, so I used to do only one and it, it just wasn't enough. I need to do a little bit of a combination of both, but if you're just starting out, yeah, I'm maybe like trying a bit of yoga. If you, you know, if you like running or going outside, um, even grounding like in the forest, but it's, it is important to, to keep your system clean and clear. Um, and the same with your mind, you know, it's not just a physical vessel. It's also the mind, um, you know, staying in a frequency of love and a frequency of gratitude, of abundance, of, of patience, of compassion. These are all emotions that help you raise your frequency and, you know, then be, be, be a good, um, a good channel. Um, I would always um, be wary of someone who is channeling or doing energy work if they are not, you know, if they like smoking, or drinking or it's a, do, do you know what I mean it's there's there's a lot of misconceptions out there I, this is no judgment don't get me wrong I would never mm, judge anyone everyone is on their own path but if you ask me personally I wouldn't go to someone that I know that they're not really maintaining their system clear yeah I I can say that when I started doing light language I I did smoke cigarettes i was a you know when i right when i at the very beginning when i started i was also smoking yeah <laughs> and i you know i was doing like reiki and stuff and that helped cut down a lot um and i used to you know reiki over my food and when you were talking about being able to transmute i realized now when i was doing that i was transmuting my food before <laughs> eating it i was like oh that's so cool so reiki practitioners out there try that it's a good tip um, but when, uh, I, I started doing light language, the desire, I guess, to smoke really just, it started feeling gross and like, I just had no interest and there was like, my body wanted it. Like I could feel that it was something outside of myself that wanted it. And I was like, I don't want it. And I was able to quit. And it. I think the more I did light language, the easier it was to just let that fall away. I don't. I don't drink. I don't smoke anymore. It's. Uh, you know. It's. I think it really is the energy. I think it really does. It's shift. a process, like everything. Me also. I was. Um. I was still smoking a little bit occasionally, but I wouldn't work on people at the time. I wasn't mm. working on people, so it didn't really matter. Do you know what I mean? It didn't really matter if I was um well not as much anyway but it was the same for me yeah I stopped and then um after a while I actually fell pregnant and then I had my baby and yeah I've never smoked since but I used to smoke a lot when I was younger and then the same went with the channeling with everything as your frequency rises these things naturally sort of like start to fade away and 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 fall out if it makes sense totally does I've experienced it 100% makes sense it's just um also knowing that you can say no 
to the substance itself. Like I understand tobacco is a plant medicine as a shaman. Like I work with medicine. So it's like, what does this medicine bring me? And it used to ground me. And that's, that was what I understood, like, as an empath, as somebody who's always, like, floating around in other dimensional planes, like, psychically, it would always bring me back to my body, would bring me back to the, my, the ground beneath my feet. So until I learned how to sufficiently ground into the actual ground, I was, you know, kind of relying on this plant medicine, but now I don't need it because I'm, you know, grounding myself daily with practices. Uh, so moving, moving into uh, another thing you talked about, which was the differences between these different, I guess, frequencies and these different beings. Like, how do you know when you are bringing something into your body that it's a high vibrational being versus, um, of, you know, people are using the term false guide. I don't know how I feel about that, but, um... You know, how, how, how do you, what is your process? For I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say something that this is what I also said it. This is the same thing that this is a theme that's been coming up for this like week and a half, maybe two for me, um, which is what I've been, it's very in alignment, which you're asking me with what's been coming through to me and what I've been speaking about. And I mentioned it yeah, in, in, in my live yesterday as well for full moon. So what's been going on is a lot of um, channelers out there are, have been hijacked. They're not aware of it, um, but what what happens is, okay, so there's fourth dimensional density implants, which are AI technology, which can be situated outside, which are very easy to, to remove and whatnot, and they just can cause blockages for people. Um, so so that's, that's, that's one thing. Then there's more, how can I explain this? There is, it's like more technologically advanced implants that nefarious beings and lower dimensional frequency beings and whatnot place into channelers um, they either abduct them or they pre-contracted and they place these into them and they actually place them inside their um, cerebral cortex and what happens is these things have be, are being controlled and they send impulses to them so you'll get peoples with with tens or hundreds of thousands of followers um, online who are who who are channeling good information and then they'll suddenly channel something that is, is not in alignment or coherent with all the rest of the information to cause disruption, to cause confusion, um, to just cause drama in, 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 in the awakening. And I've, and I've been seeing this more and more and more. Um, I don't know. Mm. I, yeah. I don't know if I can say names or whatnot. No, but no, I'll no, just no. I'm, I'm not going to say names, but there are a handful of people that some days I super resonate with what they're saying. I'm like, oh my gosh, so much light, so much love. Like I can feel it. And then other days I'm like, uh, this feels so fake to me. Like what is mm -hmm. going on here? It feels like I will literally question this person. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I trust my intuition so much. So it's like, why am I getting these mixed yeah. messages? And it's not just one person. It's like, mm -hmm. I feel it with multiple people. And then I have to ask myself, am I one of those people? And so that's, that's where it comes down to, like, how can someone who is channeling or doing this work, like, know for certain that they're not channeling some Well, generally, these people thing. will will say things like that they're the second coming of God or Jesus, and they will tell you what to do. When someone's channeling from source and purity, they're not going to tell you what to do. They're going to hold space for you to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. They're not, do you know what I mean? They don't think they're better than anyone. They're humble and they're, and a lot of these people who are uh, being controlled and have been hijacked, they say things, as you said, they say things that are true and relevant and whatnot. And then they'll just be like, no, but you can't do this and you can't do that. And this is wrong. And that is right. They will bring okay. polarization in their teachings. Whenever there's a lot of polarization, stay away from it. We all human, so we all entitled to have our own opinion and our own understanding of whatever is going on, um, you know, on a collective level. But when they start bringing you a lot of polarization or implementing their thoughts, and this is like this, and that is like Rejecting. that, and this is right, and that is wrong. That's 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 when they're moving away from source. They're moving away from unity. Anything that promotes mm -hmm. division is moving away from unity, which is moving away from source consciousness. Absolutely. I can see... I can literally, as you're speaking, I can hear the things that those particular Instagrammers, you know, how they'll shift from, 
you know, like, oh, holding space to you have to do this or this isn't right or and they get really aggressive in how they deliver it um so you know you guys look out for that remember that what you consume visually is the same as what you consume like through your mouth or you know like you want to make sure that what you're listening to what you're watching is sustaining you in a healthy way so if anything makes you uncomfortable just just don't watch it <laughs> right yeah. yeah and you'll get a gut feeling like mm -hmm. you even if you don't have to be a channeler or spiritually advanced or whatnot to get a feeling from these people if you feel something's off it's generally off your gut is always right yep yep awesome so you had talked about these implants and these technologies so um for people who maybe are are not uh working in the energy realm or doing any kind of like energy work necessarily like what do you mean do you mean that there are beings that come and actually like insert physical objects into our bodies you know you're right you're no right. it's not really it's not really that physical it's fourth oh, okay. dimensional density most of them um the, the well the ones that i generally remove a lot in sessions and what happens is you can either pick them up or they actually are well you obviously you contracted to have them before i had a lot that had to be removed because um, if you are, star, are a star seed and you have a mission, like they don't want you to do your mission. They don't want you to spread light and love. So you'll get these implants that can either be blocking your third eye, uh, blocking your ears. Um, they can be at the back of your head. I generally remove them around the cranial area and cranial structure. They can be in other parts of the body as well. Um, but when they just in the lower chakras, it's more like cordings and attachments that I actually find that I remove on people. The implants are generally up high and they're not really that difficult to remove so this is general implants this is not the ones that uh, are put into people who have been hijacked this is something different there's two different types of, well there's many different but these are the two different types that i'm speaking about so this is not the ones i was speaking about before so, these so the terminology are, you're using though is like this is terminology that your guides have kind of given you and you know yeah. like so so for people who maybe haven't been in the starseed land uh for those of you out there this can be heard as as like blocks you might have heard yeah. like your reiki practitioner using blocks or yeah. i had to extract something from your energy field to me when i'm working on someone like on my massage table it will literally feel like a physical object that i am pulling or like goop that i'm pulling out yeah. of someone yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean you know like on a in a different dimensional plane it might actually be like objects and st stuff but to you guys it might just feel like heaviness or like like i don't know like like uh static -y, weird yeah it, it depends because you can totally have does. cording so there's a lot of different things like generally implants are a lot more difficult to remove than a, a general cord they're not hard but if you know what you're doing it's fine but if you are so yeah so this is a it, this is quite a difference if you're working on yourself and you're not aware that you have implants and then you're not going to be able to remove them but you're going to be able to remove energetic cords because those are easier to remove so that's kind of like a bit of a difference if you go to someone who knows what they're doing um then they'll be able to remove them but if you go to someone who's kind of like sort of like just clearing your system here and there that and 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 they can't see or they can't feel or pick up that you have an implant then they're not going to remove it for you so it, it's that i i get what you mean with the terminology but it's yeah. it's a little bit different than having like a block or um or you know yeah as you said removing density removing yeah. gooey stuff removing cords removing things i guess it's it's easy for me because i have vision so i'll see yeah. The different things you know what I, I, mean? I can Some tell i can tell you feet. see the actual yeah. like you're in you're in that dimension working like i totally i've been there so i like i get it but i my goal <laughs> is to bridge the gap so that there is no learning curve for people i want to make sure that people listening they mm -hmm. understand where you're coming from because the, some of those terms might be triggering to people who are new and are like oh my gosh alien stuff i don't know about this but it's it's not like that you guys it's it's very it's it's just like Subtle. you have energy stuff that um maybe lower vibrational entities were jealous about certain qualities you had and they put stuff on you mm -hmm. and they like turned off some of your gifts because 
why you know like they're sad and angry and they don't they don't want you to be happy like you're in their space that you're ruining things for them yeah. so yeah, um that's and there's exactly different intentions for every being to do that stuff i just want to make sure the listeners understand uh because i know course. i would be a little confused if i were at the beginning of my journey <laughs> Like, uh, uh not, okay. uh, not listening. Words are triggering you. anyway. They trigger DNA activation and um, uh, DNA memory mm. um, and, and, and remembering and stuff like that. So even if even if consciously you're not picking up 100%, your subconscious knows. Um, mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly it will, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll remember anyway. I'm, I'm so glad you're using the terminology because it's really important. And I, I know that there's, there's a, upgrades and stuff but there's always those people out there who are a little too cere cerebral they're like yeah, see, figuring <laughs> things out in their heads <laughs> we get we gotta <laughs> dumb it down for them <laughs> for me it's it's i'm not using terminology for me i'm speaking normally I know. Because, it's, because it's my reality it's the work that i do and the people that i um, work with um, every single day is yes I do sometimes have to also explain a little bit but generally um, because of, of 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 the work that I do um, I, it's yeah it's for me it's not even it, it's it's me who's in another like do you know what I mean you're more like okay so like guys listen this is this is so um, I need to also adapt and get and 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 get used to that because um, for me it's just I, I, it's how I would normally speak um but but it's but you, and that's, that's totally fine what we need you to bridge the gap <laughs> I, I feel like you know I'm I'm an activator people who have never ever ever heard of any of the spiritual stuff they'll come to me for a massage like they come to me for a massage and I'm like hey are you open to trying new things and they're like yeah sure spa give me spa stuff so then I do light language singing and crystals and activations and they leave and they come back and they're like, what was that? You changed my life. I, I need more of that. <laughs> um, but they don't know going in yeah. what they're getting. I feel like you get a lot of already activated star seeds because like yeah. when I came yeah. to you, I was, you know, it, several weeks ago. So I've, I've been activated. I've been doing yeah. the work for a while. But your work is very advanced and I can feel how you you like you almost ant man it you know you go down to like this tiny microscopic level and float around in people's body like i can feel it because i know the work so it's like really neat to be able to i guess oversee or experience that because like i do work on people i don't get a lot of the same work back so it's really neat to uh, have that um let's kind of come back to the channeling thing or working with your guides in general like um you know we've been talking about channeling for several weeks and like how, how to connect with your guides and um like what what are some good practices you recommend for people to actually like meet their guides and talk to them and start to build an actual relationship because i know even though i've been doing this work forever i'm even hesitant sometimes to like talk to them and be friends with them just because yeah. it feels weird. How do you unweird that, right? <laughs> so again, having a bit of a routine, waking up in the morning, calling on them. Remember, there's the law of non-intervention. So unless you call them, they cannot help you and they cannot come to you. I mean, I just talk to them all day, every day. So if you like walk with me around the house, I'll be talking to them. Um, but because I know they're always there. Um, when I first started, I needed to meditate quite a lot more. Now I only do my maybe like 10, 15 minutes in the morning and then in the evening um, or if I need to maybe in the day on and off. I'm not someone who... I mean, if you want to meditate for hours, do it. I'm never going to say, no, don't do it. But even with my clients, realistically, how I train them um, is like, I don't really give them hours of meditation because it's people don't really have time nowadays. Meditation is a tool like everything else. But if you know, you, you, if you want to meditate for long, you can. Um, so I'll, I think it's really good to when you start to have tools, things like a pendulum, um, or tarot cards, things that your guides can come through to you. 
Um, so then you've got an anchoring in third dimensional density and it's not just a thought in the air um, of you receiving something. Um, I also sometimes will ask questions and then I'll guess goosebumps in specific areas of my body, which will be them replying. Um, so for me, it's a little bit different now because I'm, I, I, I'm, it's almost, it's like I'm permanently dialed in. So I don't need to go in and ask whenever I think of something, I'll just get an answer. But when I first started, um, these were some of the things that I would do, you know, the meditation, the asking, the calling. Um, and really it's important to remember that they are not going to communicate with you in a linear way. So if the synchronicities are good. It means you're on the right track. Don't get attached to any number and being a specific meaning, because that's just going to bring you back into polarity. Yeah. Um, it's, they're going to communicate in, in ways yeah that are non-linear so an example would be um through animals they'll communicate with you through animals so if you have any specific spirit guides that you follow like i work with butterflies a lot um, and with my cats obviously but with butterflies quite a lot and whenever i if i've got like an important question or something um this has been since i was a child and i'll see a butterfly i'll know what to do and the answer to that. Um, so there's different ways, but just remember it's non-linear. If you ask, do I have to go left or right? You won't get a sign saying left or a sign saying right. You might get a red car, um, which I don't know, your father owned and he parked it on the right side of the garage. And that means you need to go right. So does it make sense? So this is the kind of way um, in which they, they can come through, yeah. Wow, okay. I, lo I love those answers because, I mean, you really broke it down pretty, pretty clear. So, um, <laughs> okay. So I don't, is there any, I don't, I feel no more questions. Are there any other questions or any other things you want to give the listeners to help them on their, their journey to reconnecting with their star guides and with their, I don't know if you do ancestors, but with their people, with their peeps, like. Yeah, just trust yourselves, really trust yourselves. Your guides are there. And remember, guides are also, they they like us. They're also going through lessons. They're also going through their own journey. Um, some of them might be for, with you for some time, some come, some go. You won't necessarily have them all, all the time with you. So I had two guys that were with me while I was pregnant. Now they're not with me anymore. Someone else has come in. So, and I don't know all of them. I don't know who they all are. I know what they send me and what they give me, um, but I don't know who they all are. And remember, you don't necessarily only have one higher self as well. You can have many higher versions of yourself because you are multidimensional. Um, so just, yeah, just be open um, and be in a space of ground, be grounded and be in the moment because only when you're in the moment, you're going to be able to see the messages when they come through. If you're worried about the past or the future and you're not grounded, then you're going to struggle to see the direction that you need to go in. Awesome. All right. Um, well, how much, I mean, I, I heard you were going to be doing a transmission for every. every yeah, endless. I'll do a little bit of a, yeah, I'll, I'll do a bit of a transmission. Um, I'll just guide you guys in. So if you just want to close your eyes and doesn't matter if you're sitting down where you are where you're lying even if you're walking and listening to this that's also okay um just really be in a space of openness and oneness um and just allow for you know the codes to come through to help you for the greatest and highest good and don't listen with your mind, listen with your heart. This is going to help with opening the heart and healing the heart center, heart expansion. You might feel stuff releasing, you might feel sadness, anxiety, stress, let it all go, releasing now, releasing now, releasing now, releasing now, releasing now, releasing now, clearing, releasing, clearing, releasing, clearing, releasing, clearing, releasing, clearing, releasing, opening, 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 tuning, opening, tuning, opening, tuning, opening, tuning. Bring in, 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 divine light, 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 coming in, 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 opening, 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 activating, 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 
Activating, activating, activating, activating, activating. Nya do to koro ye ma shiso yo no to kra, yo to kra, yo to kra, yo to na, rat krua ne ma roti, ro to to shi ta kana ya ma to yo. Ya no to ya ni ya ni ya ni ya ni ya red krua siet kramat krua ya nat kra. Nya to ro iye te ora shi ta kna ro to kun mar kun mar kun mar kara yo to kura kara to kura to kra ya te na to roa ni to ra. Remember, you are whole. You are loved. You are supported. Nato koro mishisa ya nato koro ayi natan mishisa ya. You are protected. Yeto koro shia natar. You chose to be here. Nato koro maya natiro shia. Niato koro et krayo natoro imashisa. Being in a space of oneness, compassion, love, understanding, patience, 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 holding space for those who are not where you are just yet. Kiaro shisa ya. You're paving the way. Yet koro shisa for humanity. Imatoro shita krayo nato koro ayi nato shia matakayo koro. Kura yana dusha, kaya na taro yo no toko miya na taya mo to yo shita kare to kuro na tukra niya toro tera tera ti 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 gato kura yama ti ano shuso yo no to kura yana ti na ti na ti a ti oro to shisha sa 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 sa. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Oh, that was so good. My body relaxed. Yeah. No. Very gentle. It was a very gentle transmission. Oh man, mm. but it, it definitely put me in a different place. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all floaty and gooey. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, question: uh, When you started connecting with light language and like doing your activations and everything, like, do you know which star group you're working with, or like? you you did yeah. one language there so like what what language yeah. were you speaking because I I, so I I think it's important not to get attached to any identity any star group any language or you know we a lot of people channel out there there's a lot of different dialects I mainly channel from my higher self um, one of my higher selves which is the ninth dimensional Pleiadian being I do channel from a mantis 12th dimensional being as well which is another part of my higher self so it really just depends I will generally um, say when I'm in channel if I'm channeling for a collective if I'm channeling a specific being there's a being who he's like 12 maybe 13 is a, a society being um, that I channel quite a lot who actually is living just outside the atmosphere. He's a boy. Um, so when he comes through, I do mention um, that it's him. So it really just um, depends. Sometimes I'll get a lot of technology downloads that can be a Turian technology generally. Um, so that's also different from, it's still light language, but it's technology itself. So it's more actually activating, activating stuff. Um, so right. it's different, but I, I actually learned with time and practice and trusting myself and trusting my channel. When my channel first opened, um, I didn't really know much. I was more like a feeling um, or I would set an intention and then what would come through, I would know what it was. Um, now I'm just really in a space of surrender. So, mm. yeah, it's really interesting because I, you know, I've had to do a lot of research for my show. Uh, I had a, a whole month of light language at one point. But your your channel Ling is so different because you do you know clearing 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 activating activating and when you're doing that you're like your hands are doing this right but inside the body it literally feels like you're you're almost like creating like a tornado and it's it's really interesting like I can feel everything releasing and and clearing out that way. But your technique or like how you go about it is so different than what everybody else is doing. And it really makes, you know, like it makes me wonder, you know, how many different ways of experiencing and like expressing light language there are. It's just really, yeah. really neat. I think with me, I've worked very hard in integrating both my galactic and human side. So I ground a lot and I'm up there a lot. So 
I think maybe that's why it didn't always come through like this. It's evolved, obviously, um, with the the English, the the light language, the switching from one to the other, the movements. It's, um, but yeah, I would say personally, I think it has a lot to do with with having your channel clear. So as I said, you know, being fit and healthy and doing that, but also, um, yeah, it's different. Different people channel in different ways. Um, this is yeah, this is what works for me now. But it's I'm gonna continue evolving like if you look at my videos two three years ago when I first started with the light language and posting videos on YouTube you can see it's the same language and you can see the same movements but you can also see that it's different it's it's like it was less integrated and the more um, I heal and integrate multidimensional parts of myself past timelines um, uh, you know parallel timelines and the more I clear the, the the more fluid and the more integrated it becomes and the more I activate and the more I put out the more I activate myself as well so but I channel every day I channel at least maybe three four hours a day every day for work for myself or whatever it is you know sometimes even five or six hours in a day um wow, that's, so, that's a so, lot you take this so serious yes you live it you live the mission <laughs> I, I have, you know, I, I personally have not found the way to integrate because my, my partner is uh, very three dimensional, um, does not have any interest in this world. So I have my client space and my podcasting space and my meditation space and just kind of I have to go to those areas. And I also have two kids and have to juggle that. So it's when, I, I do get it in once a day, but it's definitely not a commitment of four hours. So I commend you for that. That is that is amazing. Yeah, so you see, I can re relate. I also have a child. She's a one-year-old, but um, I don't have a partner. I haven't had a partner for, for very long, um, since like just after um, I was pregnant. I'm a single mom. And I it's there it, it you, you do need to give up certain things. Like I don't really like... I can't read not that I can't but because I don't want to put that out there but for me to be able to be in a union with someone it needs to be someone who is of a specific frequency who can be integrated with me and the work that I do because I can't allow someone in my field who is not of the highest alignment because then that's going to be in my field and then then I'll be working on my clients and then there'll be someone in my field while I'm working on my clients that isn't of the highest so I've had to give up a lot um, to be where I am now and to do what I do the way that I do it now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fine. It doesn't really feel like a giving up. Um, do you know what I'm saying? But there are mm -hmm. very solid boundaries that I've had to keep in place and maintain in my personal life, mm -hmm. even with my family. Like, do you know what I mean? There's, there's, you know, because for me to be able to channel the frequency and the way that I do now um, I need to be in a certain frequency and as a consequence so does my surrounding so does my environment um, so there's a lot that I've kind of in a way given up um, and that I've sacrificed to be able to carry on in my journey the way the way that I'm doing it now well I commend you for that because that that takes a lot of personal power and um I, I understand the the pain in having to do that. I've, I've had to cut a lot of people out of my life for that exact reason. My partner brings aspects that I need. Um, he is vital for certain, my own integrations. And so I'm activating him constantly and I've seen like so much development for him. So for me, just where I am, I was so airy. I had no grounding. He is extremely grounding. Yeah. Um, and he has okay. provided me uh, the support uh, energetically in that area that I never had before. So I do get what you're saying. I've been with partners who did not hold space for, mm -hmm. for me in a healthy way. And I've had a lot of friends that I had to cut out of my life because they weren't holding healthy space for me. And I'm very selective now with who I bring into my life and into um, my, my family's life and into my home because of that. So I, I totally understand. I, and I, I think that bringing that up for the listeners is also really important because boundaries, like one of the core, core practices that I needed to learn was there's grounding, of course, but boundaries was like number two. 
Once you learn mm-hmm. to ground, boundaries is next. You need to learn boundaries. And it's not just physical boundaries. It's energetic boundaries. It's learning to say no. When people mm-hmm. pop up in your mind, it's going, hmm, that person seems to have an unhealthy attachment to me right now or me to them. I better cut cut that. Wherever it is, hey, guides, cut that for me. If you don't know what you're doing, just ask them to do it. They'll do it. Most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I really appreciate like you bringing up all these, all these things. So why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners what is going on, um, on your side, like you're recording lives, like all the time, like where can they find you? Uh, what, what should they, should they reach out to you? Should they take your courses? Let's hear it. Let's hear your sales pitch. Yeah. So I do, (laughs) I do, um, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, it's my name, Altea Lucrezia. It's a bit difficult to spell. (laughs) Beautiful. But, um, Thank you. But um, yeah, you can just, I mean, if you Google my name and then light language, I'll come up straight away. What I do um, always ask that I like for support is I do a collective healing once a month um, and it's only for $12 and it's 45 minutes of channeled light language and you get a recording. Um, And it's really, it's really, uh, you know, not a lot for you guys and it really helps and supports me. I do do one-to-one sessions. I do activations as well. Um, People who have just activated in light language or who are, you know, wanting to activate in light language. Um, I do obviously energy clearing. I do past life regressions as well. And then I've got um, courses that I do. All of my work is channeled. Everything that I offer on my website down to the color coordination is channeled. So it's not Altea giving you um, a service it's a channeled service that has been given to me to offer to the collective so I think this is a very important thing to think to say um, even the I do a six-week program um, that takes you through it's really a crash course on awakening it, it helps you with clearing past life work again channeling um, manifesting abundance um, learning how to remove your own cords and you get out of it that you can basically like do energy work. That's what it is. That is my goal. That's what I have been told to do to train light workers, to train people to learn how to do energy work so that they can go out and do this work themselves. I don't want you to need me or anyone else. I want you to go out and do more healing work on, um, on other people. So yeah, I'm sure if there's a space, you can put the link. To I, my, I will to be putting my, all the links the website, below yeah, in the description. You guys can go look. Um, I I want to let you guys know before she and I, you know, plan this interview for you. I did go and get a session because I mean I wanted to know. I wanted to know what a session was like, and she did a chakra like clearing, a chakra clearing, aligning and balancing. Yeah, and it was so good. I was out like a light for like the whole the whole time, and it felt so good, and I felt so good. And she even, like, told me what was going on in each chakra and, like, you know, where I had blocks and how I could support myself in those chakras. Like, super, super helpful. Um, I do recommend going and and trying out her services because, like, it, it felt really good. And it's important even if you are already a healer or, you know, if you do Reiki or whatever, you need other healers. Like, it is so important I know as a healer, I find so many other healers with this weird competitive notion that like, oh, I don't work with other people. I don't do this. I don't do that. And how are we supposed to help the collective and teach them to come to us if we won't go to other people? We need to practice what we preach. We need to reach out to other healers. We need to say, hey, I I, I want to work with you. I value what you do. And if she hadn't gone in and checked out everything, I also wouldn't have known that I had like rainbow light waves coming out of my throat. And that was so cool to hear. I was like, I do all this singing (laughs) stuff. I didn't know. Um, And she was like, hey, you're grounded, but not as much as you should be not grounded in the way you need. And that was so validating. I was like, I feel grounded, but not in the way like there's like a different grounding I need. And so she told me, and I now I'm able to work on that. Um, so you guys should really go and reach out to her. She has very reasonable services uh, and service prices. And you get so much for it. So anyway, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on the show. 
it is such a blessing to have you thank you guys for listening and for tuning in today like it is so great to have so many like listeners coming and and tuning in every week for these for these sessions and these interviews it's so incredible just keep doing the work you guys are amazing um anyway i hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and thanks everyone for ascending together bye Are you ready to ascend to the next level? This is Rainbow Raja, your spirit guide calling. Please be sure to keep all arms and legs inside your vessel at all times. I'm just here to remind you to take some time today. Support Rainbow's Rising podcast. Go join the Discord community. Check out the Patreon, get some stickers, custom tarot cards, check out the merch, the merch, you know you want to, go connect with Rainbow Raja, maybe even get a session, who knows, your support helps make this show possible, and she loves to support you. Help support her too. Once again, this is Rainbow Raja, your spirit guide, guiding you to your ascension. <laughs>